All right. So today I want to try to talk about touch events, and so I'm going to I'm going to uh, copy this code from my repository and use that. So I'm going to create a new uh, source file that will be my actual game activity. So it's going to be game and I'm going to replace this with the code that I have. And I'll uh, I'll comment a bunch of this out because we don't need it just to show some touch events. And let's just let's just talk about this event. So the uh, we created this view yesterday, this board view. Remember that shows up in the uh, game board. So this view is drawn based on this class that we wrote. This is a extends an image view class. And so that's our custom view. And it does all the painting of the background uh, for our game board. So the, uh, the game class is an activity. It's extending from our base activity. And instead of, uh, we, we use the XML for the board view that we have here, that we created. Okay, notice there is no layout here called board view, but it's using it from the, uh, the board view that we created over here. All right, so that's using a custom um, view that we're going to utilize. Uh, the content view is using this game board is the XML that uses that uh, board view .java to draw. Okay, so when we launch this activity, this screen will be drawn on the on the uh, board. So I have to make I have to add a new activity, and we're going to call it game. I need a way of doing that in my menus. So let's add a menu item. We'll call it uh, game. And we'll just have to remember it's the second one over here. Uh, it, it is nice. I wanted to show you the two different. It actually tries to draw the menus now, which is nice. Uh, and you can see exactly which item corresponds to which menu. That's an update of uh, IntelliJ. Then in my base activity, I have to add a new switch for my menu. And we're going to call it switch. I didn't finish that. Sorry. In my menu, this is going to be called uh, switch to game for its ID. And this is going to be switch to game. And it's going to call the game class. All right, so that starts my activity. If I were to execute that, no. It's got to be a whole activity yeah. class because we're launching a new intent, and it's got to be a whole activity. All right, so we've got <clears throat> get back to our game class, so. This is this should launch, and when I select that uh, menu item, this activity will launch. Okay, and it's going to use that board view to display. And let's just get rid of all of these things. These are not useful right now. And I want to talk about the touch events that are going to happen in this activity. Okay, so. We will, um, st I'll put a breakpoint in our switch statement here, 
and we can look at this event uh, that happens. All right, so let's go ahead and run our virtual device. So we have our virtual device running. We're going to debug it, and we're going to break on that point when, it, when an action happens. So what we do is we're overriding an Android method called onTouchEvent. And they give us this object called a motion event. And we can look at different properties in that to find out what happened. So let's uh, start this guy. This is my game. And notice how it's drawing the board, just how we did it in that board view.java. So all this code is being done by this board view, drawing the lines and the text and all that stuff. Now, when I click on this board, um, it should break in this event. So I did. I clicked here, and it broke. And I have an event action that I get from this event object, and I can look now at the event itself. It's got a structure here with information, and I can look at things like the event dot get x. That gives me an, a float, a decimal, of 333.69. So the X position was from the left-hand side of the screen, 333 point whatever to the right. Okay? And my Y is 558, which is from the top of the screen down. Actually, the Y starts from the top of the view because we're inside of this, uh, this view here, our game board view, which is our custom view. It actually starts from the bottom of the menu. So this would be zero up here. And I'll prove that to you by clicking up there. We'll let this continue on. And I'll click right on the blue border up here. Well, close to it. And look at my values again. Ah, see, it proved me wrong. Uh, so that's it. That is from the top of the screen. Um, from the top of the, the screen, the, the whole window itself. Yeah. So, um, Yeah, that would be good. I don't remember how to do it. So you guys use these phones all day long. I use my trusty iPhone. Good. So now it shows a little dot. And if I hold the control key down, it shows the two fingers. I bet you didn't know that. So now I'm touching here, and it, it'll show, it'll break here on the right. So now I can utilize that information to figure out which square they, they typed in, because I, I know the coordinates when I drew the square, I, uh, all of the lines, horizontal and vertical, and I can determine when they touch, and I have to map that into my grid. I have to find out what index they clicked on. And I leave that for you guys. I've done that already. But these motion events are, are pretty simple to play with. Um, if we want to look at uh, let's just log some of this stuff. So let's log the the uh, values x 
uh, event.getx and our y and let's look at what happens when we um, come up from that. So this is our up and this is our down. Okay, I'll take my breakpoints off and rerun it because I changed the code. And look for info of touch. All right, go to our game board. And when I click, I get actually two events. I get an action down and an action up. So I got two events. I got a down and an up. And notice how they were slightly different. My X moved, the, the finger moved a little bit before I did the up. All right, my Y stayed the same, but I moved to the to the right about 11 pixels here. And that one I didn't move at all, so I've got a down and an up. So what you do to determine different gestures is to utilize these down and move and up events to, to analyze what the finger did on the screen. So if I wanna, if I wanna see if they clicked here and drug down and then let up on their mouse, I'm going to get a large difference in my Y, right? So that means that my Y, uh, they did a, a move, a swipe down. They, they clicked and drug down the screen. Everybody see that? If I do it the other way, click here and drag up, I get a down event at a high Y and, a, and the Y changes to a low Y. So I know that I moved up significantly. And I could keep track of those two variables to define how long the, they, they swiped. So you might use this to draw your ships on the battlefield. You could say, click here and drag down five and that's your, your carrier or something like that. That might be some way to do it. And you draw it in that, those particular squares. Or I can click and drag right, so let's do a right drag. I click and drag right. The, the differences are that my, my Y, I'm sorry, my X changed significantly, right? I can see that it's a big difference. And my Y stayed pretty much the same. And dragging the other way, my X went down from 914 to 191. So all I have to do is save the variables when I get a down event and compare them with the, the uh, X and Ys on the up event. Now what I did when I clicked on my, my screen, I only looked for the up event because I don't care where they clicked down. I want to make sure, be, I want to make sure that when they lift their finger off that that's where the square is. Uh, if you look at some of these uh, buttons and things. If you click down and you say, oops, I didn't want to click that, if you move your finger off of that and then let up, it doesn't execute the button. They're looking for the motion, the up event. That's, that's, I want to make sure that they were on that button when they hit up. Otherwise, I'm, it's, it's like I canceled that, that motion. Does that make sense? That's the way most people do it. That's the way we do it on the iPhone as well. We look for up events. Up events are the most important. We only care about the down event to determine if uh, if they're swiping left and right or drawing something significantly. Start. Yeah, starting point and ending point. And we can do the move. We will get a bunch of these uh, events as they move. So let's do these. Let's print these guys.
and restart it. And now if I click and drag, notice how many moves I'm getting? I got a ton of move events. So there are cases when you might want to do something with those move events. You might want to store those and uh, I don't know. I don't have an exact case for that in our, in our game. I would, even if I'm drawing the ships on the screen, I would only want to capture the down and the up event. I don't care where they moved in between. Because you get a lot of events. See how many events we got? Hundreds. Okay? And if I drag to the right, I get a down event and then a bunch of, well, let's, let's clear our thing. Click up, and I get an up at the very end. It's the Android uh, decides that. They detect, they're detecting movement. So if you pause and you're still down, it's not going to send anything. So let's, let's do that. Let's show you. Um, if I drag down, notice how it's stopped, but I haven't let up on my mouse button yet. My finger's still on this page. And I can move all the way around, stop. It knows that I'm not moving. It only can tell when I'm moving when some when uh, its detection grid is doing all of that. I, that's all in the Android operating system. But when I stop, it stops sending me events. And I let up on the mouse, and then I finally get an up event. All right? So you can see you might use the move event if you were doing a drawing program. And you would do line twos, each one of these X's, and you could draw circles and stuff like that. That would make sense. But uh, for what we're doing on the battleship, I don't think you need that. All right? Any questions on any of that? No? Just like normal. All right, let me pause. All right, so I've added my code. And here's my battleship board, just the attacking side. And I can click. And it, it's at, right now I have it so that it's putting a W in that square. And I, I said a W because when I click on this, I have to tell the server that I've made a, a, an attempt at a hit on that cell. So there's some server latency in contacting the server and getting the request back. So when that request comes back, I have to update my, my grid with whether that was a hit or a miss. So the W will change to an H or, a, or an M or whatever, right? But this, this did all of the X and Y coordinates to determine what index I'm on. So I'm on H4. And it determined that from the x and y coordinates. So I'll just show you a little bit about that. Um, this is my event action up. And you can see how many times I tried to figure out where the x and y was. Um, but basically, once I figure that out, I. Uh, I set a value in my double array that I have here, and I say I want to set that to be waiting. And then I invalidate that view. Once I invalidate the game board, this entire view is the game board, it redraws that based on my uh, board view.java. Okay, this, this gets redrawn. It says, okay, that whole view got invalidated somehow. So I have to redraw it from the beginning. And it redraws the, the title and all the grid. And based on my double array that where I store whether it has a ship or a miss or a hit, it draws that an S or a W or an M or an H based on that information. Okay, So 
and I just used letters that you could use a circle, you know, whatever you want to do there. But uh, every time I click, it's invalidating this whole entire screen and redrawing it again. So that's, it's pretty fast. Isn't that cool? Obviously, I don't have any ships on here, and it's not actually communicating. But when in this point here, when I have an action up, I would want to send an API call to the server saying, this is my turn. I selected this value. And the return of that should give you the computer's choice. And so you have to update on your side, both of those. So you're going to be updating the top and the bottom. Remember when you used to play, you would track their hits as well? I used to, anyway. It, whatever they called, I'd, yeah. I'd select it, and I'd draw a little white peg as they missed my ship, and a red one as they hit my ship. So that's going to be on the bottom square here. You'd have to draw a whole other square. <laughs> uh, you'd probably run out of memory with that. So. That's pretty cool. There's an S and there's an H I, I, that I hard coded just to make sure my S and the H's were working. Yeah, I overwrote it. I don't know why. That's a bug, obviously. Yeah, those are just drawing a text string. Right. Right. What I did was. I took, I took the, the, the uh, bottom of the grid of that square, and I subtracted the height of the text size. So it was like 30. I subtracted 30 and drew it right in the middle. And I added the same from the left x. It was close enough. <laughs> you can figure out the center and all that kind of stuff if you want. I think I did that on some of it. On, and you can look at my code. Um, I figure out the center based on the cell width here, and then I draw text inside it. That's for these. These are centered inside of these squares, my A's and my 1's. Oh, crash. Oh, yeah. So they can't click anywhere but on my stuff. So obviously it was an out-of-bounds problem here with my... Well, yeah, mine's not done. I'm not going to give you the done project. You guys have to do that. Of course you say that. Yeah, it's a big exit button. <coughs> All right, any questions on any of that? Um, just to show you some of the other classes that I came up with, I have a game cell class that has information about every cell. So every one of my grid has an object that's a game cell. And it has Booleans in here to see whether it had a ship, a miss, a hit, a waiting. And then I stored the height and width and top left and bottom right points so that I could use that to calculate where to draw the, the letter and all that kind of stuff. So I, I did that. And I create that in my game. I actually create a game grid, which is a double array of game cell objects, right? <laughs> and I've got an 11 by 11 array of, I'm not. Yeah, it is. A lot of it like word search. So I just loop through here, and I create an object for each one of my game grid pieces. And then I use that game grid in both this program and my board view to uh, determine what to draw. So I look at this game grid object. So that's what I was talking about. You need, a, you need some way of storing information about what the screen should be drawing. And so you keep a whole separate double array of that information so that your game board can just draw that stuff. Whatever's in there, it just draws it again. Yeah. Yep. All right. Isn't that fun? So your task is to build the 
Android client to the server, and you're going to create turns, and you're basically, at this point, you're only going to be playing a computer. You're going to be playing the, the server itself. So the server is running Rails, and it's going to calculate and, and make hits and misses on your game board and uh, see who wins. That should be interesting. Actually, that's not completed yet. I still have some work on that. But you guys have enough, I think, to start with. And that's your final. Um, I have to expose the registration. You'll have to do that on the website for now. Um, I don't have the registration as an API. You could do that from your game, though. Obviously, it would be nice to uh, create a user on the Android <laughs> so they'd never have to go to the web. That would make sense. But for now, you're going to have to go to the web. So I just have to expose it to the API. And that's extra work to, on your part, so. All right, any questions? So everyone will be playing the stage. Um,